In today's video, I'm gonna be showcasing to you how I replace this green screen with the video of me dancing that you just saw with the help of a couple different effects inside After Effects. If you want a quick overview of what we're going to be using, the first and most important one is the corner pin effect. This helps guide the perspective of how that screen is tracked. Then we're gonna look at Mocha to give us those coordinates for our corner pin effect. And finally, we'll use key light, key cleaner, and advanced spill suppressor to get rid of that green screen and ultimately replace it with this beautiful shot of me dancing. So <laughs> let's hop right into it. I'm gonna start with a clean slate so you can see this process from start to finish. I'm gonna take the clip that I wanna work on and drag it down to the create new comp icon in the bottom left of After Effects and release. The reason I do this is so that I have the same resolution and frame rate of that clip throughout this whole process, therefore nothing gets confused along the way. Without adding anything else to the comp, I'm going to highlight my source footage, go to effect, and go down to Boris Effect Mocha Mocha AE. This is a free effect that does come with After Effects. Add it, and then you will click on their little icon to launch it within After Effects. If this is your first time opening Mocha, you'll probably get a couple different pop-ups. Once you get past that, you should get to this Essentials view. If you are not on this Essentials workspace, let's all get on the same page, and right here is a drop-down menu, also up here on Workspaces you could select, but we wanna be on the Essentials just so we all have the same workspace. With that out of the way, let's start tracking this screen. And we can do that by creating what they call a Spline. Up here are our tools. There's the pick tool, and I think the second most important one is the create spline tool. Once you start clicking on your program monitor, it will create what they call a spline with these red lines. In order to close off a spline, just right click and it will close it off. So notice that I created a spline around the edges of the cell phone. It doesn't need to be right up on it. In fact, it's better if you don't have it uh, right on the edge. When I did create my spline, it added the layer right here. To make things organized, I'm going to double click this layer and just call it cell phone screen. Moving below this window, we have our essentials and layer properties. I'll get into this a little bit later, but the big one that we need is perspective that won't come highlighted by default. So make sure that you click perspective. Underneath here is track, and then these options are for your surface plane. I'll get to that in a second. You also have those options up right here. And then one last important part of the window is down here to the right. These are your keyframe options. So if you need to create or get rid of all your keyframes or jump between keyframes, these are the options right here. The important thing to always keep in mind when using Mocha is that it is a planar tracker. It is not a point tracker. It took me a little bit to grasp that concept. The short explanation, hopefully this does a good job, is if you're used to After Effects and if you were tracking a point, so say you were tracking this little dot right here on the phone, the moment that my hand got in that way, you wouldn't be able to track that dot anymore. What Mocha does is it looks at the entire surface plane of the cell phone. If my hand got in this way, there's still information on this plane and where it is in space, or the perspective of that plane, regardless of if my hand is in front of that dot or not. In my example, I've put some challenges in there on purpose. I've already tried to track this before recording this tutorial, and I know it doesn't work when the hand gets in the way of the screen. Sometimes it will, but for this particular instance, it does not. With that in mind, we need to have some way of telling Mocha, hey, this is the cell phone screen that we need to track. This is a hand. We don't want you to get the information from this hand because it's not on the same uh, plane, the 3D plane, as my phone. So we need to mask out the pixels of the hand and just tell it to look at the pixels of the cell phone over time. Another thing would be reflections or another challenge on this is that my screen changes. There's a tap zoom, so those black bars move. Because these black bars change midway in the recording, what I wanna do is just look at the outside cover because we can track the outside cover as a plane. So to do that, I'm gonna highlight my cell phone layer. I'm gonna go back up to my X spline tool 
click and hold. Now we have available to us these other versions of the X spline tool. And I wanna to go to the X plus. This is going to add to our spline. If you didn't do this, let me just show you what happens. If I start to create a spline, it creates a completely new layer. That's not what we want to have happen here. So I'm going to go to that X plus and I'm going to create a spline on the inside to exclude the screen. It may seem counterintuitive considering we want to track the screen, but the cell phone cover is on the same plane as the screen and it's a much better reference because it doesn't have any changing pixels like the screen does throughout this clip. In order to really showcase to you what we're looking at, I'm gonna go from Essentials and go to the Classic View. I'm gonna click on this Show Layer Mat. I'll go back to Essentials View. And everything in this opaque looking zone is where Mocha is going to look to track the pixels of. And I'm gonna track forward. Remember I have perspective selected and hit track forward and we'll look at the track. Fast forwarding here, it looks like it did an awesome job tracking the screen on this second part where the purple is. Remember that we haven't tracked this first part yet because of the hand and some other things that we need to do, but we can check our work on this second part by showing our planar surface. And we can do that by going up to this little icon here and click that. That should pop up a little blue box with these corners. Eventually, this box will become the corner points that we're going to be using on our corner pin effect inside After Effects. But for right now, we're just gonna use it as a reference. So I'm gonna click and move these to the corresponding corners like so. One good tip here is to hold the Z key to zoom in. So I'm using my scroll wheel and holding the Z key. Another one is to hold the X key. So if I hold X, that's the same as if you were to hold space bar inside After Effects, that's the hand tool. Another good one is the multiplication key that just goes right back to full screen. Give me a second while I set up this planar surface. Now I can go over here to layer properties and underneath insert clip, we could put the Mocha logo as a reference. But for me, I like to use a grid and I'm gonna use the 32 by 32 grid. Move my playhead over here and just hit play to check my work. I'm just checking to see if there's any drift or anything like that. And it looks pretty decent to me. Now let's go ahead and address the first part of the track. And just to show you what's gonna happen, I'm going to track forward. And the moment that the hand gets in there, you can see our grid start to get off as well as when that screen pops up. Notice that the track is starting to move along with the hand. That's not what we want. So I'm just gonna stop that and we're, we're gonna fix this issue. So instead of creating a spline on the inside, now we need to draw a mask around the hand to tell Mocha, hey, don't look at these pixels. And the way that this works is we're going to create a layer above our cell phone layer. Mocha reads the pixels when it's tracking from top to bottom. So if it sees another mask or spline in the layers above the cell phone layer, it will exclude those pixels that'll become much more clear here when we create our spline. So I'm gonna go back up here to the X plus and I'm gonna click and hold and go back to the normal X spline layer tool. I'm gonna go to our layer properties and just get rid of this so we can see what we're doing. So go back to the X spline tool and remember when I start to create another spline, it should create a new layer. So the minute that I tap right there, notice that it created layer five and I'm just going to create a spline around the hand like so. Now, because I have the show planar surface, it brought up a square again. I don't want that, especially for this mask. So I'm gonna turn that off, going to go back to my essentials. So I'll track forward. One other thing that I forgot is these gears right here. This is telling Mocha, hey, create new tracking keyframes when you hit the track forward or backward. And because I've already tracked my cell phone screen layer, past this point and I wanna keep those and it works, I don't wanna change that. So I'm gonna turn this off for right now and only track my layer five. I will continue tracking now. Now it's not affecting this layer. And the moment that the hand gets, okay, so right here the hand got out. So I'll go back a little bit. And because this A is selected, which it should be by default, anytime I move on the spline, it automatically creates a keyframe. If I wanted to get rid of that keyframe, I could go like this and get rid of it. 
or I could add another keyframe like so. I'm just gonna continue to click track forward. Anytime that the hand gets out of that spline, I will stop, create a new keyframe and move along. And at this point, I could track the rest of this and maybe I should, but we've already tracked this on the cell phone screen layer and it looked completely fine. So right here, I say I wanna get rid of this mask and I don't want it to look at the information anymore. All I need to do is highlight that layer, so layer five. In fact, let's keep everything in order. So I'm gonna call this hand mask. So the hand mask I have selected, my playhead is right here and I'm gonna to go to layer properties. I'm going to click set layer out point like so, and you can see that it got rid of it for the rest of the timeline. See how it just disappears? I don't wanna have any more keyframes for that, so I'm gonna turn my gear off so it stays where it needs to. And now I'm gonna go back and turn my gear on for my cell phone screen, go back to this keyframe, and now we have the ability to track forward. And you can see what's happening with the opaque layer. As the hand moves and that mask moves in place, you can, tell that Mocha isn't going to look at those pixels anymore. So I'm gonna track backward and hopefully we get a good track. I'd say for this tutorial, that's a pretty good job so far. There's probably some nitty gritty things that we could go in and fix with some keyframes. And I want to stress here that because Mocha is a planar tracker and not a point tracker, if I were to go in here and move this plane like this, that is not a keyframe. So if I move that, notice how this plane doesn't go back to where it was from this keyframe. So if you are experiencing drift and you're thinking that you can just go in here and adjust the plane every couple of keyframes, it's not gonna work because that's not how Mocha works. You need to get a proper track. If that's the case, you would have to go through and find the problem that is making Mocha drift throughout the clip. And for me, those instances were the hand and the screen changing. And I got rid of those by creating this outside kind of layer that it's looking at for the cover of the cell phone. At this point, now we can take our tracking data from these exact corners that we set with our surface plane into After Effects. Go over here, save my project. Inside After Effects, we can X this out. Go down to tracking data. We want to create track data. I just want to have my cell phone screen. Go here, export. I want to do corner pin support motion blur. And here's where we need a layer to export this corner pin data to. And you might think you can apply this directly to your replacement footage, but in most cases, this won't work because you don't have the right aspect ratio, resolution, or frame rate in that footage. So let me show you a way that you can make it work every time. And I'm gonna go to my timeline, right click, do new, solid, and it could be any color that you want to, just make sure that it's the comp size. So I'm gonna click here, make comp size, and I'm gonna call this reference blue. Hit okay. Now we have a big blue screen here. So over here in Mocha, now I can apply, after doing the corner pin support motion blur, go to layer export reference blue. Apply export. Now, check it out, yo. Cool beans, right? So our reference blue, I'm going to right click and pre-comp this. We're gonna leave all our attributes out here in our original comp, and I'm gonna call this corner pinned comp because this comp is properly corner pinned to the screen. And at this point, we need to create a composition that's at the same resolution as our screen. If we don't, it's still squished, right? We need some way of getting that resolution of the phone at the proper perspective. I'm going to delete this really quick. So inside this corner pin comp, we need to pre-compose it one more time and take that comp and make it the resolution of our phone. So I'm gonna right click this reference blue and then go to pre-comp. I'm gonna call this pre-comp actual size leave all attributes, hit okay. So this actual size pre-comp, we're gonna go to the composition, composition settings. Here is where we need to put in the width and height of the screen that you're replacing. In my case, it's gonna be for that iPhone, which I already know this since I looked it up. It's 1170 by 2532. And I'm going to hit okay. Now this looks a little bit more familiar, right? We no longer need this blue frame. So I'm gonna get rid of my reference blue and now I can bring in my actual footage. And here is where I'm going to right click, go to transform and uh, fit to comp height. 
For you, it might be something different, but just scale it up so it fits in the frame how you want. Everything that's in this frame is what's going to appear on the screen. Then I'm gonna go to the corner pin comp. If I zoom out, we're getting close, right? If I go back over here to cell phone comp, this is what it looks like. We just need to stretch it out to the actual bounds. So to do that, go to the corner pin comp. We're going to right click the clip, go to transform and fit to comp. And we end up with this stretched comp that kind of looks like a meme, right? But when we go back to our original cell phone footage, everything is as it should be on the phone. Just to showcase to you why we end up with this really fat meme looking uh, comp is because if I were to go over here and go to my effects controls, the corner pin, what's happening is Mocha originally has the coordinates of these corners all the way at the corners of the frame. And then the coordinates or the keyframes that Mocha supplies to After Effects is to take these exact points that are at the corners of the actual frame to this point inside the frame on the phone where it had the tracking data. After this, it's fairly straightforward. So I'm going to take my comp, move it underneath my layer. So now we got that green back here and type in key light. Again, we're gonna put on that key light plus key cleaner plus advanced spill suppressor on the top footage, grab our screen color, click the screen. Then I'm gonna scroll down, do advanced spill suppressor, scroll through to see that we have nothing weird going on. I'm gonna pre-render this. And there you finally have it. We have successfully tracked and replaced the screen from our original clip. If this video was helpful, which I hope it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. My name's Javier Mercedes, and until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.